In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, brothers and sisters, we heard Christ calling his first disciples. And he does so in a way where they would also understand who he was. It says in the scriptures today in the Gospel of Luke that Christ was preaching by the lake of Genisaret. There, speaking the word of God, speaking words not only of wisdom, but words coming from the mouth of God. And as he was speaking by the beachside, there was a man, his name was Peter, and he was cleaning his nets because he had just gone fishing. And as Jesus was talking, the crowds were listening, and amongst those who were listening, was also him, Peter, whose name was Simon. And once Jesus had finished, he turns to Simon Peter and says to him, take your boat and go further out where it's deeper. And there cast out your nets. And Simon says to him, probably pretty stressed as well and with anxiety says Lord we have been fishing all night and we have caught nothing but because you say so I will do it and so Simon gets into the boat with his brother Andrew and they go further out and they cast their nets and when they went to pull their nets up they couldn't because of the weight of the catch of fish that they had. They had caught so many fish that they couldn't even bring them all up into the, into the boat. And so they called another two brothers who became disciples of the Lord, James and John, to help them as well to bring out all these fish, the multitude of fish that they had caught. Seeing this miracle... Simon says to the Lord, go away from me, Lord, because I am a sinful man. And Jesus now, seeing the humility of Simon, says to him, changes his name and calls him Peter. And says to him, from now on, I will make you fishers of men. And so it says that when they went back to shore, they left their boats and everything that they had there and they went and followed Christ Jesus. What an amazing gospel reading. What truly an amazing gospel reading for all of us. Because all of us are considered, since we bear the name of Christians, to be disciples of God. And imagine your frustration if, for example, your boss tells you, I need you to continue to work. But you're going to work, but I can't pay you. You won't be getting paid for your work. That's exactly how Peter felt when he was cleaning his nets. He was working, he was fishing, but with no result which means that he, his wife, his family, the people who are waiting, relying on him, were going to suffer. And then Jesus intervenes. He intervenes and says, go out, further out, and cast your nets. And if anyone knows anything about fishing, You'll know probably that the time that Jesus was preaching, which probably would have been around morning time, is not the time where you go out and fish. Fishermen go out and fish midnight. 
when it's still dark, but they know that that's the time that they're going to get their catch. Jesus knew nothing about fishing. He was a carpenter. Peter was the fisherman. And Peter could have easily said to him, you do not know what you're talking about. I've been fishing all night and not only all night, but this is my profession. Just stay out of it. But rather than doing that, Peter obeys the Lord. He obeys the Lord because who knows, who knows what he would have been listening to as Jesus was preaching by that beach side that day. And you notice that Jesus doesn't preach anywhere. He goes to the nicest places. Where do we want to go to relax sometimes? We don't stay at home and we don't sit in front of our TV. We go out to relax where? By the beach, by nature, in the bush. These are the places where Jesus was going. And these are the places where people were following. Because he knew that it's places like that that take people's minds away from their everyday chores, from their everyday concerns. And by the beachside, Jesus was preaching to the people. And he was speaking, the gospel doesn't say what he was saying to us, but he was speaking to us of heavenly things. And Peter obeys him. And not only does he obey him, he reaps from his reward because he has learned to be obedient. Here's a word which we don't like, obedience. Many people don't like that word. But if we truly understand what it means, a lot of the times we know that obedience pays off. How many times have our, our parents told us, don't do this? And they told us, don't do this, but what do we do? We think we're smarter than our parents. So we go and do it, and as we say in Greek, trometamutramas. It's him. We suffer the consequences. Because they know what the consequences will be if we do whatever it is. We know what the consequences would be if a three-year-old goes and touches the flame on fire. And our mum goes and she smacks us on our hands and says, Don't touch it. Or do this. Learn to be obedient. And from our obedience, we begin to learn from their experience. God asks us to do the same thing. He tells us in a nice way, look, I know more than what you do. And not only do I know more than what you do, I have given you all that wisdom. And all that wisdom, brothers and sisters, is in the scriptures. And in the 2,000 years of the church, 2,000 years is a long time. 2,000 years of experience of knowing what works and what doesn't work. What's right and what's wrong. And yet, it's so difficult to be obedient to the Word of God. But Peter, who was, reaps, as I said, from his rewards. And we, the same, become different when we learn to subject and to be obedient to Christ. You notice at the end of the Gospel reading that the Apostles leave everything that they had and followed Christ. Everything that they had. What do we do? Do we leave everything that we have and follow Christ? Yes. Everything that we have. Because everything that we have becomes Christ. And we offer it to Him and we say, Christ, thank you for everything. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my work. Thank you for my school. Thank you for my education. It all comes from you. And I use it only for your glory and nothing else. But notice how the disciples, in order to become followers of Christ, have to leave behind some things. The same thing with us. In order for us to be obedient to Christ, in order for us to truly follow Him, sometimes we need to leave behind certain things. Because we know that those things are the things that are stopping us 
from following Christ. Those things, rather than allowing us to move forward, are drawing us and pulling us back. From allowing us to get up, they push us and hold us down. And each of it, every one of us know which of those things that are keeping us fallen. Which of those things that are keeping us away from God. And some of those things need to be removed permanently. And some of those things need to move or be removed from us at least temporarily. At least temporarily. Temporarily, for example, give yourself half an hour a day. Remove certain things for half an hour. Remove television. Remove your iPhone. Remove iPads. Remove whatever you can. Socializing, friends. Remove it for half an hour a day. Leave it aside. And say for half an hour, I'm going to give it to Christ. To the Lord. Because if I don't, then what happens? I get messed up in this world that has taught us now, which has taught us to constantly have our mind working. And I fall into this trap as well, and so many of us do. Constantly working. So constantly checking our emails, constantly checking social media, constantly watching television, constantly needing someone to talk to. We're driving in the car and rather than driving in silence, we need something playing. Either a radio, either talking to someone, either being on the phone, whatever. Because we cannot stand the silence in our mind. It becomes uncontrollable because we don't know what to do with this empty space. And God comes and says, allow me, give me some empty space so I can get in. Otherwise, we become burnt out. And that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. He wants to burn us out. He wants to make us exhausted, not only physically, but mentally as well. So that we have no time, no time for God at all. No time for prayer. No time for reading the scriptures. And how many of us say it? I am so busy. I am so busy. St. Isaac the Syrian says that we should, we should give God at least 15 minutes of our day. Every single day we should give him 15 minutes. Unless we, should, unless we are very, very busy people, then we should give him one hour a day of our time. If you want to be sane in this world and a follower of Christ if you want that peace that Christ offers us that joy then we have to allow him in in our heart to learn to be obedient to his most precious and blessed word because we know that it is that by that word which we are saved It is by that word that we learn to find the way, the life, and the truth. And by holding on to that, we enter into the kingdom of heaven where we become here. We become disciples, true disciples of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.